Welcome back to another video. Today is a requested video. So many of you have seen my video with the Placeit Challenge in and asked me what shifter mount I'm using on there. And whilst I've linked it in the description on those videos, I haven't actually physically shown you what it is. So today I'm gonna to show you what that shifter mount is. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to take it on and off because that's the second most popular question I get about the, those videos and that mount is, I bought one, Cole. How do I actually get it to fit onto my play seat? Now, I didn't actually fit it to my play seat because I got my play seat second hand, if you've seen my video where I review it. And it came with this mount fitted. So we're gonna figure it out together, basically. I think I know how it comes on and off. It's not that complicated, but um, maybe it is because some people are struggling with it. So we're gonna figure out how to get it off. Uh, I'll give you a little walk around of the mount itself and just explain a couple of the quirks about it. Because it's only about, 15, 16, 17 quid, something like that. Um, and it puts the shifter in a place where you would want a shifter. The official play seat shifter mount puts it parallel with your wheel deck, which is not where you want a shifter. You know, and you know, no one has a steering wheel here and a shifter here. That's not a normal driving position. We all have it down, you know, lower, sort of nearer our hip and thigh type area. Anyway, that's enough of the intro. I'm gonna grab the camera take it over there to the, to the play seat and show you what I'm talking about. Right, let's get this off, shall we? So here's the, the mount here. I'm gonna do a, a close up of this once I get it off and just talk a little bit about the mount itself. But it looks to me like we have to remove this plate here, which I've already loosened. Um, this is how you adjust the angle of it. There's a, a thumb screw under the back here. So I've loosened that off. I've taken the wheel itself off. Yoshi's sitting there holding that for me. Say hello, Yoshi. Um, or Yoshi, I don't know how you pronounce it. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so what we're gonna do is undo the four Allen keys that are in the top of this plate here, which should allow us to remove this. And then there's a, like a hand tightening lever on the mount itself that we'll undo. And I think this just slides up, round, and then comes off the end here once we take this little Allen key out as well. Now I'm using my trusty Halford's tool kit that I bought the other day. There's a review of that on the channel. It's a pucker tool kit and it's on special offer, 80 notes off. So if you need a tool kit, go pick one up. Allen keys, spanners, sockets, everything. So this is a, does it say what size the Allen key is on there? This is a four mil Allen key we're gonna use here. I'm gonna undo, my head's gonna be out of shot, but you all know what my head looks like, so we won't worry about that. Um, we'll undo these four, and hopefully, as I say, that will allow this plate to come right off. These, these four Allen keys are also how you adjust the position of this plate, whether you want to move it forwards or backwards, because there's four Allen keys that you use, but there's eight holes, two at the back, two at the front. I'm using the middle two, but that allows you to shift it backwards and forwards depending on your preferred driving position and of course just how big or small you are. Maybe if you're a bigger guy or taller, you want it further away from you. Oh, okay, what's that? So there are captive nuts on the underneath, judging by the fact that one's just fallen out and rolled across the floor. Um, although I don't know if captive is, the, well they are captive, but they're not, they're not sort of, um, secured in there, if you know what I mean. They're captive in that you don't need to put a spanner on the back because they sit in a hexagon shaped hole in the underneath of this. So yeah, there's another one to come out. Two of them have stayed in. So that should be the plate off. God, I'll tell you what, that is a weighty plate. That looks like maybe two and a half mil, possibly three mil steel. You know, props to play seat for, uh, for using such a solid piece. Now, what, this feels like it's still held on maybe by something else. Let's have a look, shall we? Maybe I need to undo that all the way. As I say, I haven't had this off, so we're literally figuring it out as we go. And then this little plastic piece. And then, oh yeah, and then that slides off. The, oh, this is interesting. We've got a stud. Can you see that on the camera? I don't know if you can. There's a stud 
here, which is what the thumb screw, whoop, <laughs> I've just thrown over there, which is what the thumb screw was attached to. Now I'm not sure whether we're gonna be able to slide it past that or not. I guess we're gonna find out. So, um, I won't undo that just yet. Let's see if we can get past this first. So let's undo this little hand clamp, which is on here. If I remove it completely, we may be able to open it up enough to clear that stud. If this doesn't work, then I haven't got a scoop. Oh, bloody hell no. That's not gonna come undone. How did the, see, so far the idea works, but we get to here and this stud is in the way. How did the previous owner get around that then? Because there is, you can't pull this open. This is, this is solid. I mean, I know how I do it. I just don't have the necessary tools here to do it. So that is just a stud, uh, which is basically a bolt with no head, which is why I can't just put a spanner on it and undo it. So if I was, if I was at my workshop, I would grab two, it looks like M10. I'll grab two M10 nuts, screw them on there with my fingers, nip them up against one another so that they're tight and they move as one. That also puts pressure on the stud threads. So you could then get a spanner, put it on one of those nuts and wind the stud out, which would then enable you to slide this past and down and you wouldn't even need to move that actually. It would just come straight off. Now I can't actually show you that because I don't have two M10 nuts here, but I suppose I don't really need to. Um, because I've told you everything you need to know. And in fact, I'll give you a close up of the stud again in a minute, and I'll do the close up of this still fitted here because obviously I'm not gonna be able to get it off right now. But I can see now why some of you were saying, Carl, I don't know how to, how to fit it because it is a little more complicated than what it could have been. So I'm gonna grab the camera, bring it over here, and give you a close up of the mount and of the stud and explain again what you need to do to get that stud out. Um, it isn't complicated, you just need two M10 nuts and a pair of spanners of, this, of whatever size that nut would be, probably 17 mil. But you can get an M10 thread with different size heads, so whatever you might be. But if you were looking to do this and you've got, you haven't got a garage like me, or you're not someone like me that just has random nuts and bolts kicking about, go on eBay, order yourself two M10 nuts um, and then whatever. And obviously you're gonna need a set of spanners to do this. Again, this is why I reviewed this Halford toolkit that's beside me, because as sim racers, we're often dicking about doing stuff like this, you know, to get things how we want. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's grab the camera and show you guys a close up of, of what we're looking at here. So here's our stud that I was talking about. You can see it just screws into this top bar here. So I'll explain once again what you do. You can get a stud removing tool, but if you haven't got one, just buy two, it looks like an M10 thread, M10 by 1.5. So buy two M10 nuts off of eBay. You screw one on, so maybe up to where it changes color here, the line, uh, and then screw the other one on, and you get two spanners, and you tighten those two nuts up against one another. That puts pressure on the threads of the stud. It basically grips the stud, and then you can get your spanner and put it on the innermost nut and start to wind it out. I'm guessing it's not gonna be in there very tightly. But, um, but that's why we can't get this past, past it, because you see we've got an opening, you can see that opening in here, that doesn't pry open any further. There's no way that's getting past there. But So that's how you do it. This is your little hand clamp, I don't know what the proper phrase for that is, but that's what you, you tighten and loosen to undo this. Now, as you can see, it all slides around there, no problem. And as it comes down here, let's just change the camera. This, this piece of the play seat here, it literally fits snugly onto there. And then you just do your grip, your hand lever up underneath, tight as you can. Now these, these mounts are tough. They are designed to hold monitors on the wall. So they don't come undone easily. So we do it up nice and tight like that. And that is how it sits. Oh yeah, speaking of tools and stuff, 
That's the Halfords toolkit I reviewed the other day. So if you need one, have a look at my other video for that. I'll link it on the end card of this video. But anyway, here's our, here's the mount itself. Now, you can see there's a hole here and a hole here, um, and two smaller holes here and here. These holes, um, if I remember correctly, there was originally smaller holes there, like what you see here. I just opened them up a little bit to match the hard mounting points for this shifter. Now, what's gonna be the easiest way to flip this over? So this, this is a monitor mount, so it does move around, but it takes a, quite a bit of force to move around. I'm having to use two hands to do it. Um, you know, your, your typical changing gear antics, it's never gonna move around, even though it is designed to articulate. So it's absolutely fine. You probably wouldn't wanna put a Fanatic shifter on here because it might start to, to move around. Or if you do use a Fanatic shifter, just turn the resistance down on the shifter. But for this, look, it's perfect. It's not, you know, the whole rig is wobbling. It's not gonna move at all. Um, but yeah, let's try and show you guys the underneath of this. It should probably would have been easier to just slacken it off and, and do it that way. In fact, it's exactly what I'm gonna do. Let's undo this again and show you, show you it up here. You can see how it articulates. It's fucking tough um, and it isn't going anywhere. So for the money, it's, um, it's a pucker little mount. Again, that'll be linked in the description below. So, all right, I've undone that. Let's get it up around here. Now, can you see? Yeah, you can see. So there's one and oops, just hit the camera. There's the other one there. Again, same, same as the holes I've drilled there. I just drilled, I just drilled all four out to open them up. And that's how I've got it mounted. You can also see your little clamps here that you would use to mount to a desk. Now, they're done all the way up. You can see there's a small gap between the mount and the clamp. You can use these clamps. That's what I did first of all. All I did was put a little bit of wood, I think, in here just to take up that gap a little bit. Uh, and it actually allows this to slide on the mount a little further as well, because there's a bit more of a gap at the back here. Um, but it will quite happily go further forward and you can use those clamps if you want to. But yeah, that um, I think that's everything really we need to know. You can see now how, how to get it on by undoing that stud that's just still in shot there. Um, you can see what tools you need to do it and what tools you need to get the wheel plate off with. Um, See if I can get myself back in the camera. Hopefully I'm in shot here. I haven't got a preview, so I can't see. But that really is it. It's not as simple as perhaps, you know, some other things, but this is sim racing. Nothing's ever that simple. That's why I bought that toolkit the other week, because there's always some dicking around to do. You know, we all like to modify things and play with things and get them just how we want them. So that is the shift amount that I use. There's a link to it. You can see how well it works with, um, with the Logitech shifter, no problem at all. I think again with the Thrustmaster shifter, that would also be fine because that isn't particularly tough to move either. And even the Fanatic, you know, if you want to turn the resistance down on that, you can. Or the other option, of course, is where that articulates on those knuckle joints, you could simply put some Araldite or another very strong glue all around where it articulates and make it rock solid and then it wouldn't move at all. But you know, a Fanatic set up on a play seat might be a bit overkill. Um, I don't know how well the, the play seat would hold up when you've really got to push hard to change gear. But yes, you could make that solid just by applying Araldite around the moving parts and you know, so that, or I'll say an equivalent, really strong glue that, that sets really hard so that they then wouldn't move. I mean, they're, they're tough to move anyway, but, um, but that would really stop any, any potential for movement. But that really is all there is to it. Yeah, link in the, in the description below. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't remove the stud and show you exactly how to do that, but hopefully I've explained it clear enough. If not, look on YouTube, there's bound to be a video showing you how to remove a stud, um, you know, out of, out of anything, out of a, a car, or a, you know, a cylinder head or something. In fact, if I can find one, I'll put that in the end card for you as well. 
But uh, yeah, you know, I literally was figuring this out sort of live as we were as I was making the video. So you guys have come along the journey with me. Uh, and as I say, I bought this second hand with it already on there, which is why I didn't know how to do it. But thank you very much for watching. I hope that's answered the question about what it is, how it works and how to fit it that a lot of you have asked me. Um, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Stay safe and stay at home.